very interesting game. And in the remainder of the course, we're actually going to show you some classroom demonstrations as well on quantum mechanics. Anyway, for the time being, the second example that I would like to explore is simple, and you can solve it in its full, in its full glory, because now you have all the tools available. The second example that I would like to talk about is particle in a box. <coughs> now, the Schrodinger equation is not just an artificial tool for our imagination. It actually gives you technology. So, these simple concepts concepts are actually at the heart of many technological applications as well. So this concept is also at the heart of atomic structure. What are the orbitals, the wave functions of an electron inside a hydrogen atom? So these are all the basic building blocks of understanding nature and matter. So these are really fundamental concepts. And what we try to do in the SSE core is actually to give you the fundamental concept to arm you with the arsenal to understand nature and eventually to harness nature to build new objects, new devices, new structures. So it's very important to understand this concept of particle in a box. It's just an extension of the time independent Schrodinger equation. Now, for, but before I can do that, I would like to just uh, tickle your minds about the concept of a potential energy. Suppose I have this axis is my x-axis. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to describe what is meant by dx. And what I'm, now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to plot dx versus x. Some, I'm just giving you a plot.
So if this is the energy of the particle, in this region its energy remains constant, but then at this point onward it's using up its energy to overcome the potential energy. So it goes here, straight here, straight here, straight here. Here its energy becomes E minus V. Minus V, minus V, V is going up. So E minus V is going down, 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 down. At this point, E minus V at this X, let's call it X naught. E minus V at X naught is equal to zero. So at this point, all of the energy is being used up in overcoming the potential energy. And this is the ultimate stopping point of this particle. Right? <coughs> Easy. So this is the concept of the potential energy. So can the particle, if everything is ideal, can the particle be found outside this region beyond X naught? No. No, nothing whatsoever can allow this particle to go into this forbidden region. This is a forbidden region for the particle because it doesn't have enough energy to overcome the potential energy. Alright? So this is all forbidden for the particle. Now if I can change the slope and make the slope steeper, then the particle can only go up to this point, x1. If I make it even steeper, the particle can go only up to this point. It's also possible that I make this a hard wall, a hard brick wall, and the potential energy goes to infinity here, very high then the particle cannot go beyond this wall because it doesn't have enough energy. The energy is always finite and the potential energy it has to overcome is infinite. So at this, this is just the ultimate limit, no go area for the particle. The potential energy here has gone infinite and now our particle, the poor particle is destined forever to remain to the left of this wall. Its destiny is ultimately locked. It never goes beyond the wall. It's trapped. And this particle represents a bound particle. Previously, we've seen a free particle. That's a vagabond. It can go anywhere it likes. Everything is allowed for the particle. It can go anywhere. But this is a bound part, example of a bound part. And the particle can actually bound from both sides so that the particle is inside a well, a quantum well. Now the problem that we're going to look at is what if the particle is inside a well? Distribution. And how do we solve it? First of all, 
all, what we would like to do is we like to break this into three regions. One, to the left of this left wall, two, inside the well, three, to the right of the right wall. And there are physical systems that can actually realize which approximate this infinite well. For example, if an electron is on a nanofiber, which is a single chain, a single molecular chain, it can be confined to exist only on, on the chain, and it cannot jump off the ends of the chain. So that approximates a particle in a, in a one-dimensional well. Remember, we're talking about only one dimension, that just have x here. But really, I can have x, y, and z, but that becomes more complicated. That's probably a homework problem. Anyway, now we have three regions. Yes. Infinite well means that the slope of this line is infinite. The potential energy goes to infinity. So the particle has no chance of going beyond the ball. That's an infinite well. Now, physics is the driving force behind the mathematics. Remember that. So you cannot complain, I don't know the mathematics. If you know the physics, you can actually make the mathematics work for your benefit. The first question I would like to ask you, and please don't speak up, I'll ask you individually. In this region, what's the wave function in region one? Yes. Zero. Why? Q has zero in the particle cannot exist in the forbidden region. And if I take the probability density, it has to be zero. But the wave function modulus squared is the probability density. So if the probability density is zero, the wave function is to be zero. <coughs> Likewise, here the wave function is zero in this region. So we don't actually need to solve the Schrodinger equation. We can just use our physical insight to find out what the wave function is going to be in the forbidden region. Now the question is, what's the wave function inside? Now what's the potential energy inside? Zero. So we actually have indeed already found out the solution when the potential energy is zero. So inside the wave function, uh, inside this well, in region two, In 1 and 3, I already know that the wave function is 0. So I don't need to care about this. Now I need to know what the wave function is inside the well. Now this wave function represents a particle. So I'm actually learning the behavior of the particle. How does it behave inside the well? Now, extremely strange behavior is going to come out. And I'm already smiling because it's surprising. And you'll also smile, hopefully. So inside region number two, we have the Schrodinger equation. Potential energy is zero, and we already have a solution, right? The solution doesn't change. The poten this is a solution to the Schrodinger equation when the potential energy is zero. We so inside region two, this is the wave function. Now we have some further information available to us that can help us find these constants. That's what we're going to do now. X. So x is now between minus L by 2 and L by 2. So psi x is, I'm taking lots of symbolism for granted here because you'll understand what this is. So psi x inside this region is simply a e i k x plus b e minus i k x, where k is given by this. And we don't know the energy of the particle as yet. Right, yes. It's some constant. 
Okay, I'm giving you guys the problem that the potential energy is constant. <coughs> and I put it to be zero. I can also have in the tutorial, uh, which came before it was actually destined to come, you, have, you can have a potential energy like this, which is a sloping potential energy. But here I'm simplifying the problem and I'm giving a straight constant potential. Now this is a solution. Now what we would like to do is, we would like to find out the constants A and B. Because in order to get a complete picture of the solution, we actually need to find out the constants A and B. There's some desire inside us to satisfy ourselves and our ego and our desire to get complete information about the system. And that means it necessitates the determination of A and B. Otherwise, these are just lagunas inside our solution. We need to find them. So now we're going to do this. And we're going to use our physical insight. The first thing that I would like to mention is that the wave function has certain properties. The first property is you can have a wave function like this. It's possible to have a wave function like this because the wave function has a certain slope. At each point, the wave function has a slope. The slope of the wave function is simply this. You all know this from calculus. This is the slope of the wave function. But the slope of the wave function is always finite. <coughs> because if you look at the Schrodinger equation, You are taking the double derivative of a wave function which means the derivative of the derivative, the derivative of the slope. So the slope has to be finite or the slope has to be continuous so that the double derivative remains finite. So here the slope of this wave function is always continuous. if the potential energy is finite. However, the wave function always has to be continuous. Okay, so the key requirement is that the wave function must be continuous. What does this mean? I cannot have a wave function of this kind. function of this kind. At this point, everything is smooth here, but here the wave function becomes discontinuous, which means that the slope of the wave function becomes infinite. I cannot have a scenario of this kind in which the wave function abruptly changes. The wave function psi is always continuous, which means that deep psi of dx always remains finite. Because if this becomes infinite, the derivative of this doesn't make sense. So the wave function always is always continuous. It's always smoothly varying. It cannot change abruptly. If I were to make a function of this kind, here I would need a wave of zero wavelength. I would need an, an additional wave here compressed into this small region which is of zero wavelength. Zero wavelength means infinite k. Infinite k means infinite energy. So this is not possible. So the key idea is that the wave function is always smooth. It cannot change abruptly. All right? Now, I use this piece of information to actually determine these constants A and B. Now, what's the wave function here in this region? Zero. What's the wave function at the edge? Because the wave function cannot change abruptly. 
right at the edge at x equals L by 2, the weight function must also be 0. So whatever the wave function is inside, at the edge of the wall, it must collapse, it must go to 0, it must be 0. Because the wave function has to be finite. And it must be 0 here as well. So now this means that I can have this piece of information to give you more information, give us more information about the wave function. The wave function at L over 2, which is the right wall, this must be 0. Which means that A, E, I, K at x equals L by 2 is K L by 2. plus B E minus I K L by 2 this object must be equal to 0 now I have 0 here I have K L by 2 which is a constant not really, but we'll explore it. So we have one equation that gives us some hope of finding A and B. Some hope. To solve this equation, try to find out A and B, but there are two unknowns, A and B. So we need two equations. So the other side gives us the second equation. Psi at x minus L by 2 is 0. This is A. E minus I K L by 2 plus B E plus I K L by 2. This must equal 0. So now I have two equations and I would like to solve them to find A and B. Do you understand the gist of it? Now I just I need to do some algebra here. That's all. In order to find A and B. Let, let me do this algebra once. So the first equation, 0, means A E I K L by 2 is simply cosine of K L by 2 plus iota sine of K L by 2. Right? I have expanded the exponent as cosine and sine <coughs> plus B cosine of K L by 2 minus iota sine K L by 2. I just done the expansion of the exponent. Now I have A plus B cosine k l by 2 plus iota a minus b sine k l by 2. This is 0. Alright? I've just expanded these exponent factors. Instead of E i k l by 2, I have written cosine k l plus over 2 plus iota sine k l. Now I have an equation in which I have a real part. So this is a real part. And this is the imaginary part. Is this equal to 0? 
This is zero because there's no real part here. So this on its own is zero. And this on its own is zero. Now this can be zero in two scenarios. When A equals B or sine K L over 2 equals zero. So I need some more information. Let me get the other piece of information from the second equation. The second equation gives me 0 equals a cosine of k l by 2 minus iota sine of k l by 2 plus b cosine of k l by 2 plus iota sine of k l by 2. This is just algebra, looks boring but one needs to do, do it. a plus b cosine of k l over 2 plus iota b minus a sin k l over 2. Does it help? Does it help? No, it doesn't help. Because you get the same result from the first equation as you get from the second equation. Alright? So it doesn't help. Sorry? So if you add this term to this term, this becomes zero. So this is just negative of this. So this term equals 0 and this term equals 0. So how do we solve, how do we find out A and B from these equations? Sorry? Why? Why do you use that? No, but A can be equal to B. If A equals B, this is always 0. So we can have A equals B and both of them are now 0. No, but X equals 0, we don't know what the wave function is. Yes. No, we cannot assume that. No, not necessarily. But A need not be equal to B because this can be zero. But we don't know what the wave function is inside. We are going to find that. So we cannot take another point inside. Yes. Uh, not later. But once we have one constant, we can try it. So we would like to eliminate one constant from this. So we would like to, so the second will come out from normalization once we have A or B. Yes. It is a static wave, but then how does it help? Why? Why should it be zero at the center point? You know quantum mechanics is good enough? No one knows quantum mechanics is good enough to say that the, at the center it's going to be zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
sorry if we put a is equal to cos k over 2 raised by both if we get if we put a equals b this equals 0 so this cos this is the this condition so if you put by with the cos sign become this condition so this cos cos But then you can put a constraint on k. K to be something that makes this go to zero. So it's not starting off from one. You can put k such that k l over two is 90 degrees to get zero here. So what we could do is actually we could take the derivative. We could find the slope of the wave function.
बाद का बड़ा मुश्किल सफर होता है ठीक है बड़े रस्ते बड़े खतरनाक होते हैं और लेकिन अचानक एक ऐसे मंजिल आती है जब बहुत खूबसूरत आपको एक मंजिल नजर आता है दिस इज वॉट हैपनिंग ओवर हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू फुट टॉर्ट टू एस पार्क But it's actually systematic, <laughs> extremely systematic, and I'm doing really slow so that everything can seep into you. Now I have this expression over here: a minus b cosine k l over two plus iota a plus b sine k l over two equals. Zero. Now I have this equation. Which means that this is individually equal to zero because it's just a real part and we don't have any real part here. This is zero plus iota zero. So this is zero. This has to be zero. But this also has to be zero. Right now, I have this equal to zero, and I have this equal to zero, which means I have this equal to zero, and a plus b cosine k l over two equals zero. So when I add this equation with this equation, I get two a cosine k l over two equals zero. But this thing must also be equal to zero, right? So this thing must also equal zero. But I also know that this thing must also be zero. <coughs> so now, if I add these two, I also obtain two a sine k l over two equals zero. So now, do I have some expectation of finding what the solution has to be? Can I use these pieces of information to find out A and B? So my a is zero. So now I started off with the wave function. Does this make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. What? If my a is zero, now this is an exercise. I give you five minutes to think about this. What should be the solution? What should what should I get for a and what should I get for b? I give you five minutes. Just, just discuss with your neighbors.
0 equals i k a minus b cosine k l by 2 plus iota b minus a sin k l by 2. Am I getting you an additional piece of information? Alright, so now what I would like to do is I would like to give this as a problem to you. We have the infinite well, one dimensions, and I spelled out the equations for you. Now before the start of the next class on Thursday, I would like you to come up with a solution on a neat piece of paper. I would like to use all of this information, starting off from exponents, as we've done in class, not taken from a textbook in which you use cosine and sine, but you start off with exponentials, you use the boundary conditions, which are the continuity of the wave function at the end point, and come up with what should be A or B or both of them. So we're going to start off the next class with with those solutions and I'm going to collect those solutions. Alright? And I'm going to break them. If you if you provide me with a solution, you get full marks. Alright? So please, we're going to start on the next class with this particular solution and we're going to look at some more applications.